Welcome. I am the Golden Emperor, and this is part two of what if Goku wished for Frieza's potential. And if you watched the last part, I wish you and I hope you did. Well, we left off as Goku Black was soon to arrive. So with that said, I don't want to waste much more more time than I have to, and let's get back into the what if. This is part two of what if Goku wished for Frieza's potential. Goku Black's arrival is imminent. He, he would eventually come through a portal and everybody would be in shock and would be in awe. The face that that person is wearing is the one of Goku. The one of the person that is a father to kids around here is a friend to others. That person right there, well, he may look like Goku, but don't get it twisted. He is not Goku. Trunks would even say this, and Goku would go up to fight him, but before he could, Vegeta would go charging in before Goku could even take a second look. He would power up to his Super Saiyan God form as his red hair would glimmer all around, and Goku would watch, thinking that why is it that he's only using his red-haired form? He would charge toward Goku Black, and he would begin the fight, and it seems like Goku Black is on the back foot the entire time. Vegeta is ruthless. He begins to beat on Goku Black, trying to just outpace him and outgrind him immediately, kind of putting him in a position where it seems like Goku Black's only option is to run. Yes, he knows Goku is strong. He knows that the body he took was a powerful one, but what he didn't know is how to use it. Every cell, every single thing within his body was Goku's, built on the fight experience of a true Saiyan. That was a borrowed body, and that borrowed body would not allow him to keep up with a Vegeta that had absolute intentions to somehow catch Goku in his, well, kind of freakish growth that he's shown so far. Vegeta would show that he was leaps and bounds above Goku Black, beating and destroying him. But as Goku Black is about to be forced through a portal, and as Goku Black is about to leave, well, Vegeta refuses to allow him to do so. He would, he would immediately charge up an attack, and he would enter his Super Saiyan Blue evolution form. Goku would watch this and would be shocked. It seems like Vegeta has entered a new realm for himself. Everyone around is shocked as well, seeing the power that Vegeta is portraying, and he would scream one final flash. A giant beam of light would come soaring toward Goku Black as he's encompassed in the blast and completely incinerated by the final flash. Whis and Beerus are shocked but impressed at the progression that Vegeta has gone through on his own, thinking that Goku's advanced progression must have pushed him to a brand new level. Whis and Beerus would talk about Goku Black and how this power feels like a Kai, so they set off on their own without saying much more. On the other hand, Goku and Vegeta decide to go with Trunks to visit the future in hopes of making sure there is nobody else there. Trunks thinks that they should be fine, it was just Goku Black, but Goku and Vegeta insist because at least they can help them in the recovery of his world or of Earth, maybe finding Namek, maybe finding some other way of recovering it, they're not so sure. So they leave and head to the future, but when they arrive they begin searching for a while and well Vegeta doesn't really see anything and so does Goku doesn't see anything either. But one thing Vegeta does see is a broken down capsule corporation and the location of where his dear Bulma died to Goku Black. They talk about maybe looking for Namek, getting the Dragon Balls. But just as this is being talked about, Akai appears. The one from Universe 10 and the one that was enacting a plan of zero mortals. Zamasu. 
Zamasu speaks about how him and Goku Black were going to truly cleanse this world, but now they messed it all up. The plans of the gods was were distracted and stopped by mere mortals once again, and Goku would have begun fighting him, and the power gap would be insane. Goku would be leaps, no, insanely stronger than him. It wouldn't even be close, and eventually this would lead Goku to realizing that Zamasu is a mortal, and Goku literally cannot kill him. It doesn't matter how much power, how much strength, he cannot die. Goku even tries to use Beerus' technique of a Hakai, and it still doesn't kill him. Goku says that he can fight Zamasu for a long, as long as he, he needs to fight him, and he tells them all to flee and find out a way to defeat an immortal being. So Vegeta and Trunks do just that, leaving to the past to find a way to defeat Zamasu. Goku continues fighting, and actually sees this as a chance to train, ironically enough. And against an uh, immortal being, it would be perfect. And he tries to put the words that Whis and the training that Whis has kind of instilled in him into action. He tries to utilize his body in a way that he's never before. He tries to utilize a way of moving that he's never seen before. A way of moving that his body would react on its own. It would have nothing to do with his mind and what he was thinking, but it was all on his body. His arms would think independently of everything. His legs would try to do the same. And it seems he would slowly but surely, as the fight continues, his body would begin defensively moving on his own, or on its own, and with really no threat of Zamasu's flat out strength, Goku can genuinely use this as a way of training. Zamasu would try his hardest his hardest to either kill Goku or find a way to leave on many different occasions, but with the constant pressure of now a Ultra Instinct Omen Goku, he cannot escape. Eventually, the time machine would arrive once again, showing up, and Trunks would show that he has a little jar and what seems to be a seal. Goku would set, set up an opening for both Vegeta and Trunks, and Trunks would seal Zamasu away in a small jar with a technique that Goku finds to be very, very familiar. Goku would tell Trunks that he did a good job, and Vegeta shows that he is impressed in his own way. Goku would then tell Trunks that they can attempt to find this Timeline's version of Planet Namek, and frankly, that wouldn't be the easiest thing in the world, but with some assistance from King Kai of this Timeline, they are able to locate Namek, and the Namekians help Earth with getting back to its former glory, or at least to a certain extent. There is no reviving that many people, there is no reviving the people that have been dead for so long, but still this would help a lot. King Kai would insist that this version of Goku leaves, leaves ASAP because he doesn't want to deal with this timeline's Goku wanting to start a fight with literally himself. So Goku and Vegeta kind of did their thing. He They did what they wanted to do, help this timeline recover just a little bit more, and Vegeta would even say his goodbyes to an older Bulma telling her that she's that he's sorry that he wishes that things could have been different and that this version of himself could have been better goku and vegeta would leave and arrive in the past as trunks would leave them where they were meant to be and trunks would promise an arriving beerus and Whis that he will never time travel again but he wishes all of the family that's in front of him good luck of course, the time machine would disappear, and Goku Black and Zamasu are de were defeated. Goku goes to Whis for more training, especially with his activation of a stage of what he truly believes to be Ultra Instinct. Soon, Whis de would decide to focus mainly on Goku, especially on the instruction of Beerus. But Beerus would say that Vegeta will now learn the way of destruction, and can learn from Beerus himself. Vegeta's nervous, but knows that this may be his pathway to catching up to Goku. Goku would be about to leave, 
But as he heads out, Bulma would stop him and tell him that she thinks that she realizes now that he may have wished for his potential to be the same as Frieza with that accidental wish of that conversation that they were having before. Goku would think about this and would believe her, but decides that there is really no point in changing the wish now. And frankly, he feels it would be a waste of a wish to undo another wish that was already made. At least for now, maybe in the future. Goku eventually would head off with Whis, and for the next couple of weeks, he would train to get a grasp on Ultra Instinct, and with his power soaring, so would his control over that form, and his control over Ultra Instinct itself. Whis would watch him train day by day, as he sees his student entering the realm of the gods and even the angels. One day, during a training session though, someone that would scare Beerus to death would call Whis. Zeno himself. Zeno would call for Goku and on arrival talks of a tournament of power. And this tournament of power would begin quite soon. Eventually, it would all be agreed on and Goku would be tasked to make a small team for Zeno's Expo, an exhibition match for all the universes to watch and understand kind of what this tournament will look like. It will be Universe 7 and Universe 9 going head to head. And the two contestants would, that would be next to Goku would be Boo and his son Gohan. The first two fights would go exactly the same as canon with Boo beating Basil and Gohan beating Lavender, or Lavender and, and, and Gohan beating each other, but since Lavender used poison, you know, it ended up forcing a draw, forcing them both unconscious. But in my book, Gohan definitely won, because who won first? Gohan. <laughs> With that said, Goku versus Bergamo, on the other hand, would be similar to what occurred, but normally... But normally, you know, you would think Goku would drag on this fight a little longer. But in the end of it all, he would decide that he wanted it to be done earlier. Because he sees no point in dragging out the fight. A fight that wasn't going to be close in the first place. Goku would win, but then a figure would approach him asserting that he will take him on and defeat him. And that he, or that Goku, is an evildoer and that he is a villain. Goku would find this to be entertaining, making it making it seem especially ironic because of the fact that he did wish for the potential of the most evil person in their universe, or arguably one of the most evil people in all of the universes. Goku would accept the challenge, but soon the pride trooper by the name of Topo would regret this. Goku would power up to into his Super Saiyan Blue form, just his Super Saiyan Blue form, and that alone shook the entire Expo Arena, so much so that Topo's face would be one of regret and the grand priest would be forced to stop the fight before it even would begin the rules of the tournament would eventually be conveyed the grand priest would talk about about what's going to occur and then he sends everybody away he would go over towards zeno as even zeno knows that the fight between goku and topo would not have been close and that universe the universe that topo comes from that of Universe 11. And frankly, Zeno is intrigued at what Goku is going to do in the tournament. With all of that said, the 10 members of the Tournament of Power are needed, and Goku goes off and does just that. Goku would get everybody, same as canon, and he would even bring on the one and only, the most disliked out of everyone, Frieza. Goku and Frieza would have a bit of a confrontation before arriving even back on Earth. And Goku would show Frieza that he far supersedes him in every way now, not allowing him to even land a cheap shot blow. And Goku would easily control the energy of the Destroyer that Frieza tries to use on Goku. Frieza would of course agree to join. I mean, what kind of choice does he have? But says he wants revival at the end of it all and that Earth's Dragon Balls Will be just fine for the job. Well, the stage is set. The team is locked in. Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Gohan, Tien, Krillin, 17, 18, Roshi, 
and Frieza are all set to take on the other universes. The stakes couldn't be higher, but with Goku being on another level, how will this affect the Tournament of Power? Well, you're gonna have to find out in part 3 of what if Goku wished for Frieza's potential. I want to say thank you all for the support. I will say part 1 of this series went crazy. Probably the most views I've ever got on a video ever in the first 24 hours on my entire span of being on YouTube. Not just this channel, literally my entire span of being on YouTube. It was insane. So I hope you all continue to support uh, this channel. I want to keep growing, keep grinding, and I definitely have fallen back in love with Dragon Ball What Ifs. And I want to continue growing on this channel and growing the community. With all that said, I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope all y'all have an amazing day. Later.